Thank you, Dr. Shana. Um, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you, IPDI, for giving me the opportunity to work on this. In the next 10 minutes, I will try to focus on a uh, very prevalent but under uh, under utilized, under noticed or unchartered area of mitral regeneration in Bangladesh. So, the, so this is the echocardiography of a 86 years elderly gentleman. Uh, he had a, a previous history of myocardial infarction and CABZ. Now he presented with untractable um, heart failure. And you can appreciate that this heart his uh, ejection fraction is merely 25 to 30 percent, and there is a there is a um, mitral ligation, moderate mitral ligation in this patient. So, sorry, this is another gentleman who had a history of ischemic heart disease, suggestive of ischemic heart disease over the last three years. Now he presented with um, heart failure, and you can see that the inferolateral, uh, inferolateral wall is hypokinetic and there is a moderate mitral ligation. So the cardiologist went for the coronary angiogram. The right coronary artery is totally occluded and the other arteries, LED is almost normal and there is a total occlusion of LCX. So how can you treat this patient? This is another lucky lady. 55 years elderly gentleman who had an acute myocardial infarction inferior seven days back. Now we cannot send him to home because of her heart failure. It is an inferior myocardial infarction with severe ischemic mitral ligation. So all these cases are uh, prevalent in our clinical practice, day-to-day -day practice. So why does it happen? God has created a beautiful mitral valve apparatus which has got a well-designed mitral valve annulus, uh, saddle-shaped annulus, beautiful mitral valve leaflets, which are, which undergoes cooperation during systole. There is a very good left ventricle which pushes the mitral valve towards the left atrium and closes it during systole so that blood doesn't pass into the left atrium. And there is a uh, tethering force, the papillary muscle and cordy, which pulls the mitral valve leaflets so that it doesn't go too much into the left atrium, it doesn't prolapse into the left atrium and produce mitral ligation. So abnormality of any of these three structures, mitral valve annulus, LV geometry, or the tethering force, that the papillary muscle or cordy tendony can lead to mitral ligation. If you can recall the Carpentier classification, it is the class 3B type of mitral ligation, the ischemic mitral ligation. So ischemic mitral ligation, there is three components, ischemia, LV remodeling, and mitral ligation. And these three things are in a vicious cycle, increases each other. So why should we think about it? In about 20% patient with acute mitral ligation, acute myocardial infarction has got mitral ligation. And at least 50% of them persist after three months. And some of them develop mitral ligation even after three months. In case of chronic heart failure with ejection fraction less than 40%, at least 50% of them has got mitral ligation. And 10 to 20% of them has got moderate to severe mitral ligation. I mean, these persist even in the era of primary PCI and all this modern treatment. Does it hamper our patient's life? Yes. It reduces the patient's quality of life, it reduces the lifespan of the life, and it starts at the very early period of ischemic heart disease or development of mitral ligation. What should be done in echocardiography? Definitely you have to confirm that it is a ischemia by history, angiogram, other things, ECG and all these things and the, of course the wall motion abnormality of the LV. You should diagnose that it is a mitral ligation and there is no other causes of mitral ligation. The mit ischemic mitral ligation is diagnosed by there is a normal mitral valve leaflet there is systolic restriction of the mitral valve leaflets. That is, during systole, it will not move adequately towards the mitral annulus. It should be co-opted near the mitral annulus. If it doesn't co-opt near the mitral annulus, it is co-optation happens more apical than most likely it is a ischemic mitral ligation. You should guess the severity of the mitral ligation. 
evaluate the valvular apparatus to decide how you will treat this mitral degradation and definitely you have to assess the LV geometry because you should keep in mind the genotype is the LV remodeling. The main cause is LV remodeling and mitral degradation is the phenotype, this expression of this LV remodeling. And CBRT as usual you can use the usual parameters like jet area, vein contractor, but because of the reduced ejection fraction, the jet area will be less in comparison to the degree of mitral degradation, vena contractor will be narrower, and you can measure different volumes like regurgitant volume, ERA, all these things can happen, though it is cumbersome to make, uh, measure. The only difference between the primary and secondary MR or ischemic MR that is ejection, effective regurgitant orifice area less than 20, more, uh, 20 millimeter square or more indicates the severe mitral degradation, which is around 40 millimeter square in case of other cases. So regarding the evaluation of the valve apparatus, you can measure, you can, you have to tell about many other things like the, whether the leaflet is normal, what is the length of the leaflet, whether it is calcified or not, what is the angle between the leaflet and the mitral annulus? What is the tenting area? What is the cooptation height, cooptation length? Everything is necessary for a surgeon or an interventionist whether he can repair this mitral valve or not. You should talk about the left ventricle, you should talk about the other things like left atrium, right ventricular function, and the uh, tricuspid regeneration also things. So these are the some examples which we can take. This is the cooperation height of this patient. This is the tenting area, the area between the mitral valve annulus and the cooperation points and all other things. You should always think about the different angles. I am not going in details of it, but you should about think about the cooperation length, how much these two mitral valve lifters meet each other. The lesser it meets, that means the severe is the disease more it means that more lesser is the mitral fabric agitation. You should talk about the papillary muscle also, whether it is displaced or not, what is the distance between the two papillary muscles, whether it is asymmetrical or not. And there are different classifications like symmetric ischemic mitral ligation, which happens in case of anterior mitral ligation, where the LV is dilated globally, or asymmetrical ischemic mitral ligation, which happens in, in case of mainly inferior myocardial infarction. Should we send this patient to stress echocardiography? Of course, because stress echocardiography will tell you whether there is a myocardial viability, what is the myocardial reserve, and how this mitral ligation behaves in stress condition. If the mitral ligation increases during the stress condition, that means the prognosis is worse. The repair will not work, may not work. So how we treat these patients? One is GDMT, guideline-directed medical therapy, and CRT. Of course, revascularization and mitral valve BPR and other procedures. So GDMT worked well, but even with best GDMT, the four-year mortality rate is 40%, around 40%. CRT definitely improves the mitral degradation, but persistence of MR following CDRT indicates a poor prognosis. And there are different surgical treatments, including the LV remodeling, mitral valve repair, papillary muscle approximation, all these things. But all these things fail to improve the prognosis of the patient, improve the survival of the patients in a stress trial and many other trials. Why does it happen? So in 2016, the society recommended a class 2B indication for mitral valve repair. But by this time, there is another device, mitraclip, which come into the seen and but the mitra effort trial said that it doesn't work but at the same time the co-op trial in america said that it reduces hospitalization it improves mortality it is cost effective so what is the difference between those things things the reason is the echocardiographic criteria for these trials because in co-op trial they have taken the moderate to severe mitral degradation the lv ids less than 70 and EROA more than 30. So these are the class of patients which will be helpful, which will get the benefit from mitral valve repair or mitral procedures. And different societies also recommended about this criteria. You should think about three important things, whether the LVID is less than 70, whether 
the it is moderate to severe risk exaggeration and eroa is more than 30 square millimeter so ladies and gentlemen this ischemic mitral risk exaggeration is prevalent in, in our country but you will find very few of the prescription or echocardiographic code or discharge certificates where we mention about the ischemic mitral risk exaggeration it is a different it is a definitely important thing for our patients we should treat with guideline directed medical therapy adequate revascularization most likely by surgery because pci doesn't change the prognosis of the patient with multifacial disease and mitral degeneration it is the surgery which changes the prognosis of the patient so you should send the patient to the cardiac surgeon mitral valve repair should be tried by the cardiac surgeons of course there should be some experts for repair of the process and for that echocardiographer should mention all these reports all these morphological features of mitral valve whether the cardiac surgeon can repair it or not and of course we can introduce mitra clip in our country that may change the life of many of our patients in with mitral degeneration uh, thank you very much thank you for your patience here